Hey guys, Joe from the Crazy New York Driver Show. Today is Friday, October the 5th, 2012. Today we're going to talk about eBay. I'm going to talk specifically, if I can, about eBay Motors. Selling an eBay Motors and how it's different to some extent than other categories on eBay. As you know, I do sell a lot on eBay Motors eBay motors can consist of anything from an entire vehicle to vehicle parts, memorabilia, paraphernalia, and the like. If you've seen my eBay motors account, you know I sell caps, you know I sell license plates, you know I sell other things too. Whatever I get my hands on that I can turn a profit on is going to be sold. I would like to compare that to selling in other categories on eBay. And two categories that come to mind, if I may, toys, you know, toys and collectibles and things like that, because I also am a big toy guy. I have a pretty nice truck collection. I love die cast vehicles, cars, trucks, matchboxes, corgis, Hot Wheels, I love them. In a future video, I'm going to I'm going to actually do a whole video about that, about my collection and about how it works. And I want to also include a friend of mine who has a super big vintage toy collection. He has stuff from let's say the 60s and 70s. He lives downtown Manhattan and uh, we've been talking about doing a nice shoot at his place and getting all the nice toys in the video and that's something we'll be doing in the future. But for now, let's just talk about eBay and how it differs category to category. eBay Motors gets a lot of traffic, an awful lot of traffic, way more than the other categories. This can be good and this can be bad. For the most part, it's good. More traffic means more buyers, but more traffic also means more deadbeats. Because I'm experienced in selling, I've noticed that I seem to get more confused people in the eBay Motors category than in, let's say, a toy category. For instance, let's say a guy is going to bid on a toy truck or a matchbox or anything like that. I mean, it's not a big deal. He sees what I got, he sees what's for sale, he knows what he's getting, and he bids on it. With eBay Motors, people tend to be less informed and less knowledgeable. They often bid on items that they can't use because they didn't read the listing or they didn't ask proper questions. All right? Since my last video, I've encountered deadbeat bidders in both categories, motors and toys. Okay? The thing is, eBay, and I blame eBay, eBay has not taken an active role in limiting deadbeat bidders. Over the last few months, I've come up with so many ideas how we can limit them. And there are some people that, most people liked my ideas, but a few didn't like the idea of, me, of eBay requiring a deposit for all new people. So, to get around that, I would even be happy if eBay limited everybody to buying one item at a time. What I mean is, you get these people with zero feedback, they sign up for eBay on a whim, <clears throat> they do a buy it now, and they don't pay. Then they navigate away, and they do it to someone else. Now, this happened to me the other day, and I'm going to give you proof in a second. With my new idea, if it was implemented, You'd get your deadbeat bidder, he'd open his zero feedback account, <clears throat> he'd do a buy it now, he'd navigate away and not pay, just like always, but he would not be able to do that again until he first paid for the item he committed to. Now think about it. What's wrong with that idea, guys? Even people who are established, in my opinion, and I mean no disrespect to you guys, even people who are established, I think, should have to pay 
for every item after they do a buy it now. And that goes for me too. I've been on eBay since 99. That doesn't make me any different than anyone else. If I do a buy it now on an item right now, I don't care if it's $5, $50, dollars $5, $5,000, I should be made to pay for that before I bid on anything else. And if I navigate away, too bad. My account's locked up and I'm not unlocked until I pay for that item. Everyone's equal on eBay. Top rated sellers, small time sellers, this would benefit everyone. I dare somebody, I dare somebody to tell me they think it's a bad idea <clears throat> and back up their claim. Because guys, it's a great idea, I think. We're all sick of deadbeat bidders. Let me tell you about one I got the other day. Guy with zero feedback, no surprise there, does a buy it now on my item. He then navigates away from the pay screen, pay screen. Twicky Wabbit, Twix are for kids. He navigates away from the pay screen and he shops for the same item and he finds it $10 cheaper. He commits to that. Navigates away, finds it again. He does this four times. Out of those four, he has paid for zero. There are four sellers out there who got dicked over. Me and three others. Am I surprised? No. But it should never happen. Anybody can make a mistake one time. All right? But not four times. This is a perfect example. If that guy had been locked up, after he confirmed to, bidding, to, to taking my item, he could never have damaged the other three sellers like he did. He'd have to pay for my thing, or his account would be null and void. Right? I had another screwball during the week. Also zero feedback. Does it buy it now for my item? And immediately navigates away from the pay screen. That's always trouble. I don't hear anything from this guy for three days and he writes to me, I swear to you, I'm not making this up, he writes to me, I won the item. What do you want me to do now? Well, it'd be nice if you paid. When he wrote that, I knew right away I was dealing with what you call a dancer. A person who commits to buying your item, doesn't pay, and starts dancing around the issue. So I had a dancer. I checked what he had bid on, and he had bid on something else that was comparable to my item. So I knew I wasn't going to see any money off this clown, and I never did. Another stiff. That's probably my biggest complaint with eBay right now, is they're not doing anything about deadbeat bidders. And I talk about this week after week. Last week I was telling you how they were improving with certain things. For instance, seller protection. In some ways, security, eBay trust and safety is stepping up, is stepping up and monitoring things. They haven't really come out in public and said a lot about it yet, but it's coming, and I know it is. And it's already there to some extent, and I'm happy to see it. One of my subscribers, a guy named Chris, sent me a link the other day. And I'm going to hopefully include it below. eBay is cracking down on people, sellers, who put their links who put their website addresses in the eBay contact system because eBay does not want us selling things off eBay because they won't get their cut. Now on its face you would say well that's bad for us because we won't be able to make any side deals and make any money. And that's true but there's more to it than that. I gotta tell you something. It's been my experience that when an eBay buyer tells me to contact them outside of eBay or asks to contact me, it's always bad. 
They'll never pay. Let me give you an example if I may. Last week a woman did a buy it now on one of my items for $75. Immediately she contacts me. I don't know how to pay using ProPay. Would you call me at my house? And she types in her phone number. Now, I'm not calling anyone at their house. I'm dead set against that kind of thing. Now, if I'm looking for a date, if I'm looking to date her, then yes, I will call her at a house. But if I'm looking to sell her something, she's not getting called from me because she can claim anything happened on that phone call. And I implore you guys not to contact anybody that way. As soon as I saw what she wrote, I became suspicious and I checked her activity. And sure enough, she was a shopper. After she committed to my item, she found the same item from two other sellers, not one. Guys, one point I really want to make. It is imperative that all eBay conversations be done through the eBay contact system. It is for your protection. I notice through experience people will often contact me off eBay with a complaint. Like if they buy something from me and they pay and they get it. Rather than complain through eBay, they do it off eBay. Either they circumvent the system by emailing me directly or they call me. And I tell them, no way. I say, this is not the way it's done. I'll be happy to help you with your problem if I can. Nope. Nope, not at all. You have to contact me through the eBay contact system. That is the rules. Therefore, there is proof of any demands that were made of you or any threats that were made to you. Let me give you an example of that. Recently, I sold an expensive item to California which is not unusual because California is one of my top states. I love California. So the guy, I ship the item out and he, and he contacts me off eBay and says to me that I shipped to the wrong address. I said, how did I ship to the wrong address? I shipped to your eBay verified address. He goes, well, no, you didn't, you didn't, uh, you're supposed to ship to some other address. He says, I want money back. I said, before we go any further, do not say another word on this email. Contact me through eBay. That's the way it's got to be done. I want a record of the conversation. So, all right, he contacts me through eBay and says, I want $15 back for my trouble to go from one address to the other and get the item. Okay? Even though it's his fault, he didn't put the right address in. So I said to him, before we go any further, wait till you get the item. Contact me to state you did get the item and everything is fine. At that time, we'll talk about shipping. I've yet to hear from the guy. That was two weeks ago. I spoke to one of you guys last night. I won't mention who, he, who it was, but he was upset because somebody opened the case against him. Opened the case and left him negative feedback all in one day, which is very common for me too. In fact, I think he got the neg before the case was opened. In my opinion, a bidder should not be able to neg you until he first opens the case. Because in many instances, it can be worked out. Furthermore, I do not think anyone should be able to leave feedback, any buyer, unless they actually pay for the item. Let me tell you what happened to me. It's been a busy week for me, I'm telling you. Last week a guy does a buy it now on my item, navigates away from the pay screen. Oh no, not another one of these guys. The very next day, he leaves me positive feedback in broken English, which actually was a negative comment, something about PayPal. Like, 
Why you no accept PayPal? No good. That was his comment. And it was, it was left as a positive. So I'm thinking, this is definitely not, not good. I don't like this. I have to wait three days before I can open an unpaid item case. So when I did open it, immediately the feedback was removed. Have any of you had that happen? eBay removed the feedback when I opened the unpaid item case, even though it was logged in as positive. Me, I was glad to see it go. My question is, what I'm not sure about, will he be able to leave feedback a second time for the same item? That's weird. That's real weird. I don't know. That never happened to me before. Any of you know anything about that? I would like to thank you guys for all the positive comments on last week's video and the weeks before that. I also like to thank you for some of the ideas you give me because your ideas is what keep the show going. My personal pet peeve on eBay is deadbeat bidders. I can't freaking stand them. All right? I'm not talking about a guy who bids on an item and just disappears because, you know, that's a necessary evil with eBay. eBay is just loaded with deadbeat bidders. I'm talking about the guys who bid on your item and then shop around, bang, bang, bang. They do it to so many people and they don't get kicked off eBay. Those are the ones I got the pet peeve for, the shopper. If you come across anyone on eBay that's a shopper like that and is not paying you, I want his name. I'll put it out there. We're going to keep eBay safe. We're going to keep eBay safe and secure. Okay? The days of scamming on eBay are over. The days of you deadbeats having your way are over. I don't know which I hate more, a deadbeat bidder or a scammer. Scammers are these guys that will pay you with PayPal, get the item, file a snad dispute, and keep the item and get the money back. I really don't like them. Knock wood. I've never had one. I don't take it. <laughs> I don't know. I've never had one. But, guys, thanks for watching. Comments below. Tell me about your experiences, especially with deadbeat bidders. I'm really interested in people who shop, commit to buy your item, don't pay you, and go down the line and bid from other people. I'm Crazy New York Drive or not. Thanks for watching. See you next Friday. Hit me with some ideas that you want me to talk about.